Okay, Kevin, so here we are in uh, Wise Park, but didn't call it Wise Park when you were young. We just called it a little park. Simple as that. Nobody ever heard of the Wise thing. That became popular afterwards, I suppose. But or the new park was called as well. No, we just called it a little park because this was the little park and People's Park was the big park. So, very simple. Big park, little park. So. And just, I mean, I know you were brought, brought up in uh, John Street. John Street. Mm -hmm. So just tell us a little bit about that because just about what was like <coughs> as a child. Did you went back to when you were a child? As a tot or as a kind of a well, ten-year-old? Sort of. to get outside the house. Oh, outside the house was, then you get to know the people who lived over there and in the area. There was a lot of kids around in those days. It was, um, it's more of a village than a city kind of a feel to it. And um, I spent an awful lot of time over here. And uh, it's still pretty much the same, except in the middle there, there's a, a tree where there used to be a rockery. And it was a fairly small thing. But when you're small, you think it's like the Himalayas, you know, this is adventure stuff. And the, the staircases and steps here were, were our slides. And then after a few years up the back, uh, they put in real swings and real roundabouts and it became mobbed. Everybody came from Hennessy's Road all over the place and that was the place to be, you know. So endless fun there. There was a, what would you call it? It was kind of a, a hoop, it was like a pole in the center with a hoop and wires and it, you, you hang on to it for dear life. And the, if the guys from Hennessy's Road came along, if you were already on it, you were in trouble because you'd end up kind of horizontal. <laughs> but uh, there was a few injuries. Uh, but and, and who lived along here? Do you remember the families and kids? I remember the Hurleys. <clears throat> there was Geraldine and Claire and Brenda. And um, I remember one thing about Brenda is that when you're about this big, we were all in awe of her because she was 18. And we thought this was incredible that she was, you know, we knew somebody that was 18. But anyway, she was in that house. And then uh, there was the Ryans, it was Sheila Ryan. And then there was Tony, uh, Tony something, I can't remember his surname. And the first house here was, um, that was, dere I wouldn't say derelict, it was empty for ages. And a young couple moved in with very small kids. And there's a picture of them standing there at the rockery with the teddy bear. And there were new kids on the block, you know. And over there where, where there's the, now the, uh, the cemetery, um, the, the, the uh, Quakers, the new monument there, that was just open to the back of Heary's uh, grain stores. So there was a lot of, trucks going in and out there and uh, there was always uh, uh, it was an open space to play in that's what it was and uh, it all connected like there was a little grassy bank up there at the back of the presbytery and we used to play on that and this was a polish factory there but the windows were broken we used to sneak in there and they had things like um, clay pipes white clay pipes all broken all over the floor and that was a bit of a no-go area but and then there was just the grassy bank up there and this was and it. Street, what was in New Street then? In New Street, up, up well, around. Yeah. Not a lot, no. That was kind of at, when I was that high. We didn't. That was too, that was up a hill. We only got as far as the, the the polish factory there, where there was railings outside, simple railing, and we used to spin on them. I remember that. You know, you <laughs> you do you do you know the railings outside of school to stop you running out the road. One of those up there. That's as far as we went. We never went down that way. And on your own street. On our street, own street. Well, we had the shop, the dairy, and when I was really small, I used to spend a lot of time inside the counter, pretending I knew what I was doing with the money. So, give the lady the change, you know, this kind of thing. And they had a simple drawer, well, and it's just in and out, and I'd do that, you know, and I'd get this and get that. And, and what just, would you, the dairy, what did that The dairy was, was um, it was very simple. It was just one straight counter inside the door, and behind the counter was just shelves. There was stuff on the upper shelves like uh, tea, sugar, jam, and from there down it was bread. It was just bread, and the window was bread, and then there was the actual milk and the dairy stuff, which is just bottles of milk. Or, I remember way back at the beginning, we had churns of them. There was aluminium churns, and people would come from Castle Street into the shop with uh, the small uh, version of the churn and ladle it into it. Well, that's way back. I barely remember that. And, um, and where did you get the milk from? That's a good question. I have no idea. Okay. These things just happen around you. <laughs> <laughs> and was there cream? There was cream, and the cream was the big thing on a Sunday. Because that was when everybody went to, to Mass in St. John's over there. And I think Johnny Kelly was the guy who used to swing, as my mother used to say, used to swing out of the bells. <laughs> <laughs> and, and after the mass, the little the little shop would just be 
huge shock of luck. You know, everybody was all hands on deck to get serve everybody with the small cartons of cream and the big cartons of cream. And they'd all bring it home and they'd probably put it on their trifle or tarts or whatever. But Sunday was the day for the cream, you know, and that was the shop. I remember one thing about the shop is that the, at the time there was a, a competition for window displays. The whole town would have a, have a competition. I think it was sponsored by the tea company, Lions or somebody. And the adjudicators would come around. And I, I was kind of arty at the time, and I used to, to get all the crepe paper and do a whole window in red or something. And I don't know whether they thought it was rubbish or not, but I always thought it was brilliant anyway. Um, you know. uh, and the, uh, you, said, did, you said it was a horse. Did you look yeah, it? yeah. Um, my brother is, was a fair bit older than me, and he was into horses. And um, he spent a lot of time out the country with the in-laws and outlaws, and um, he had to have a horse. So uh, there's, there's a, there was a doorway slightly uphill to the shop front door. It was a low, it was actually lower than that than the um, the hall door, which is about six foot six. And the horse wasn't well it wasn't horse proportions. So the horse had to, the horse would have to duck to get in, right? And there was downstanding beams and things. But once they got past that there was an open yard at the back. Not huge but big enough for a little stable. But I remember one of the tragedies of of the of the moment was uh, there was a little garden beyond that with nothing more than a chicken wire fence and the horse got in because the horse was looking at this as pasture I suppose and he was <laughs> he got in and rolled around and ruined all the geraniums and everything there was there was war over that and then who were the neighbours around there? <laughs> um, well the dairy at the beginning uh, downhill from that I suppose towards the, the car stand it used to be called the car stand the corner and there was no traffic lights at that stage but the corner was a bank and was a, I think it was a Mrs. Teskey, was the bank manager's wife, and she used to come into the shop all the time for stuff. And um, I do remember the bank as being a very sort of sedate, uh, I wouldn't say posh, how would you describe it? Uh, you go in there and you knew you were in some place important. And I remember bringing in my communion money and getting a book. And I'm not sure if I was impressed with the swap. <laughs> <laughs> but that happened, and that was literally two doors away, so I felt okay that I wasn't that far away from my money. You know? And between the bank and the shop was a, was a, a tiny little um, barber shop. Now, he was really old at the time, and that, that it was actually pulled down, and it, it became part of the bank. And then afterwards, there was um, a shop that did fabrics, and that was directly in it. Then uphill, there was a vegetable shop, K. O'Neill, and they used to use our dry, our not driveway, our gateway where the horse went in. Now, at one time, when in the in the vegetable season, when they'd have let's say strawberries, was great because they used to use our space for the trays of the. I feast on these things, you know. They, I wouldn't miss another one. <laughs> and then Kay would come out and take me to the shop. But um, I remember the noise of the potato machine, not machine, weighing scales, because uh, in those days you went in and there was a big bag of potatoes and they'd literally toss it into this metal thing to weigh it, you know, and it was constant. That was a constant noise. The other constant noise was the noise of, of these trolleys that you, you would stack crates of milk and you pull it back and then you drop it and the noise of the, the milk. Oh, the other noise was the front door of the shop. There was a glass front door with a big chrome handle on it, right, and which rattled. It's funny what you can remember. I remember the smell of, of the milk. It was kind of, because the, 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 all the time it was mopping the floor. It was just a constant, you know, and painting the white. And there was a, a big bench inside the door that, uh, <clears throat> it must have been ancient. It was only about a foot high, but they used to drop the crane, the, not the cranes, the uh, churns up on that. And that was scrubbed so much that the grain became really thick on it. You know, that kind of old timber. Uh, but it was full of character, that little shop. I still have the weighing scales. It was a big old one that went over and back, a big pointer thing on it. And it had to be checked by Avery all the time to make sure you weren't diddling the customers, you know. Uh, that was there. And there was a fireplace in the shop at the back. Uh, never, quirky there's things. No cheese. No cheese, no. Well, funny, had like dairy, no cheese. No cheese, no. There was a fridge in the corner. And um, it was unusual to have a fridge even, you know. Oh, well, we used to make butter at the back. There was, there was a, a churn thing for making butter, a timber thing, like a sideways barrel. You throw in everything and you churn this thing forever and turn it into butter. And there was little paddles with gray, um, grooves on them that you pat it into shape. But that died off because then something like Kerrygold turned up and it was all in silver paper. So that took over from that. Yeah, yeah. And why, sorry, go back to uh, the shops. You were saying you were going mm. up as far as the vegetable shop. What was that up after? After that, what was directly after that? There was Condon's Fish Shop. 
and out the back of that there was, there was the, you see our backyard was onto theirs and I could see what was going on it was endless crates and fish and things so it was quite a place for smells and noises you know but beyond that there was um, there was a house uh, whose house was it I can't remember but there was lots of kids in that and then as you went up the hill there was the opticians there was um, uh, called Nand. And in the early days, that was a real optician shop, but all the mahogany furniture and the glass, all the little drawers and all the bottles and stuff. And then they modernised it, and it was great at the time. Lovely formica things, but it lost all that. Uh, and then further up the hill, on the same side, what was up there? There was a place that sold prams and things. I can't remember the name, but... Baby, baby stuff. Opsidos was Wiley's uh, sweet shop. And what we used to do is play here in the park, and if you had a few bob, we'd, we'd either go for a trip to Wiley's or a trip to Mars. <laughs> M-A-H-E-R. So. But we used to play this game as, before we go spend our penny or whatever it was in Mars, we'd do a trip to Mars, which meant you stood in front of somebody with their legs up, and they gave you a good push and you toppled forwards. That was a trip to Mars, you see. And then we'd all go up to the shop and we'd get something for next to nothing. Uh, Mrs. Marr, yeah, she had a, she, her little tiny shop was, I can't even describe it, there was O'Keefe's and the, it was a big house and she was in the tiny one next to it and her tiny little shop and she had a little sitting room and a little kitchen right behind it and the minute you walked in the door she'd see you and she'd be out and you'd get whatever you want and then you'd come back here. Uh, but there was Wiley's, that was a newspaper shop and, and sweets. Next to that there was Kerwin's which was similar but was darker somehow didn't go in there much and after that there was Collins I think it was Collins it was a kind of a second-hand clothes uh, kind of place and in those days uh, of course kids used to make trolleys out of pram wheels and uh, being a small street I used to constantly plague them my mother or whatever would you go over to the Collins and ask them have they another set of pram wheels so we can get a plank and some string and a big nail and go down John's Avenue and kill ourselves at the end <laughs> So that's, I mean, the front wheels were probably polished tins or something like that, and the back wheels were the big pram wheels, but they were like gold dust. And you'd have yeah. a string. You'd have a string on a plank and a nail to control. To control. control was a very loose term. <laughs> uh, the, best no control, the best control was hitting the pillar at the bottom if you wanted to stop. Yeah. Otherwise, it was out into St. John's you were going. Um, and what other games would you play as kids? Well, you see, the funny thing about me around here is that most of the kids were girls. The only kid that was a boy was Donal up in the Eclair, a little shop, little sweet shop up there. And we, we lived in one another's houses, myself and Donal, and we had similar interests in things like Lego and, and Meccano and things. But it was mostly girls over here. So I ended up playing here with whatever you could find, and whether it was jumping around, you know, you're marking out the ground with, with chalk to... Like Betty's, Betty's, yeah. There was that, and there was skipping or whatever else you could think of. But Do you remember any of the rhymes for skipping? Rhymes. It's a test on your memory. No, I can't. No, I can't. Okay. Um, uh, no. Okay, and you're also telling us a little bit about your own family because you're. I suppose it was kind of unusual in the sense that you were raised by a lot of women. Weren't you? Well, my dad died when I was very young, and we had a shop and that had to be kept going. And my brothers and sisters were significantly older than me. And let's say when I was around 10, they were dating and they were marrying and all that kind of thing. There was, I wouldn't call it a generation gap, but it was a gap, you know? So um, to, how can I tell you about all that? Yeah, we ended up with my aunt and my godmother living in the house um, because they worked in the shop and they kept the whole show on the road to keep the money turning over and all the rest. So it was a bit unusual about that, yeah. So uh, that, well, that's the environment. I a lot of shops had yeah, been they did. Yeah, but then I ended up um, uh, uh, with my godmother in the shop. I used to go to her place, so it was very kind of a, like a communal thing, right? That I'd go to my own in-laws, and even though she wasn't related, I'd, I'd end up getting to know all them out around Dunhill and in Tremor, and we'd go out on a Sunday on the bus to Tremor up near the the cove, uh, the, the ladies' cove. And hang out up there, go to her in laws. On the way back, you'd go to Cunningham's for a chip and uh, what was it, Club Orange with loads of salt. And then you got out for the bus. And this was a routine that happened in her place. So I had, I had lots of <laughs> fingers and lots of pies, you know. And, and the. Um, the uh, oh, sorry. Go back to. What, where did you go to school? Up the hill. 
Everything is very convenient for my uh, up to the late teens because being born on the main street meant I could just walk up the laneway here up to Stephen Street School and uh, there was no roads to cross or anything. It was very easy, off I go, do it, come back again. So I could come home for lunch and go back up again. And then after primary school, it was De La Salle, so it was down the waterside and across. Why did you go to Stephen Street and have to learn school? I don't know. You see, I started off in the, in, in the other school opposite St. John's, which is the Little Sisters. The Sisters of Charity. Yeah, the Sisters of Charity. I was over. Yeah, I was there for a while. That was a mixed school, and for a very short period there was a school. I think they were building something. There was a, you know the library that's up in Lady Lane. That was the school, the Carnegie Library, and um, we were there for a while. But it was all very crowded. I remember that for a very short period, and then I went somewhere else. I didn't question where I was yeah. going really, you know. But that's where I ended up. But most of the time was up in um, Stephen Street. And where, do you remember going to the pictures? I do, yeah. Where would you go? Um, what, what died off, I suppose, or what closed down was, was down by the Delphi Quay. What was that, the Coliseum? I think I was only ever in there once. It scared the life out of me. Something about robots. And I didn't sleep for a month or something. But I was <laughs> really small. That's the only memory I have of that. Very dark. I think there was a, the gods are angry, Miss Carrie. You know that? that oh, yeah. I think that became the, But most of the time it was the Savoy or the Regina. And I used to be fascinated. They had an oil wheel before the movie came on. In between, the, when the ads were finished, they just had this music and an oil wheel. Everybody remembers, you'd watch this bubble going around. <laughs> it would come to the top. That was up there, yeah. Uh, the golden days of, of cinema. And would you, would you remember the Olympia being open? Not really, no, because I, that generation was ahead of me. By the time I was that age, it was, <laughs> it was turned into Charlie's Junk Shop or something. It was, yeah, for many years. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters would have been big into Dancing. Dickie Rock or whatever down there. Uh, yeah, there was, there was, I, I do remember as a small kid, them getting ready to go out. All the fuss that was about it, you know. And would you remember going down to, you said about the big park. Do mm. you remember going to the big park much? A lot. I used to live down there because I had a dog called Tiny, which wasn't a very small dog. I mean, a big dog. He was turned, came in the door small, but he wasn't supposed to get so big. Um, he survived a long time in the traffic and he became well known to, to you know, it's a small town. But I used to, if you said walkies to Tiny, he would go nuts because we lived upstairs, he'd run down the, the stairs and our front hallway was um, vinyl tiles. And if you just said walkies, he would go tearing this slide and crash into the front door. <laughs> and then we'd go, well, he would just howl all over the place. And then we'd go for a walk in the park and back again. But there was no such thing as leads or anything because, um, well, there was not so much traffic, so it was very, very free kind of a thing, yeah. you know. But the big park in those days had the bandstand is still there, but there was cannons there for a long time, bedded in the ground, and I think they were shifted to um, outside the bishop's palace for a while. I don't know where they are now. I think they're back in the park. Are they back in the park again? So, they are because they're up on timber things yeah. now. They are, yeah. Um, what about? Do you remember? Um, The park, there was a sweet shop. Do you remember there was a sweet shop on the far side of the Mrs. park? Murphy's. Mrs. Murphy's, yeah. It was in a kind of a little alcove or something. It was a funny little shop. They, they had almost nothing in there. I think they had lemonade and crisps, and that was about it. I used to do uh, uh, donuts. Donuts, yeah. Hot, fresh donuts. Fresh donuts. It would get mobbed, uh, and then nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think they had a bed and breakfast next door, is that right? I think they turned it That's in. Right. They did, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, what about the keys? Do you ever remember the keys when you were I do. Uh, I suppose my limit was kind of from the Shaw's Corner down as far as the GPO because um, the, the toy shops, of course, there was the sports shop and the sportsman. Now, which was which? Sportsman was George's Street and the sports shop, I think there's a shoe shop there now, Hullabaloo or something like that. Not sure. Uh, those were the haunts. The, the, big, the big outing was to be brought to the, the, uh, the, the toy shop. But my, my, my godmother was very friendly with the three ladies that ran it. She was very lucky because she could chat for ages and I'd just go snooping. And I, I had a bit of freedom in there. They'd let me take boxes down and things. And I could put a deposit on something. And I'd have to wait months until I got it, you know. But, you know, that was a good learning curve. 
I think anything I got in those days was a deposit down, but uh, the family were saying, you can't have it. No, the higher purchase, you have it now and you pay for it. It was the other way around. I start paying and I get it when it's fully paid for. It was a good lesson. Yeah, it was. Yeah, didn't like it very much, but it was a good lesson. <laughs> Uh, and what kind of things would you, I mean, you were saying Lego, what other things would you mm. do when you were small? Lego was the big one. But I, I, I liked making things. Meccano. Meccano was there, but that was before Lego. And that was too slow. I mean, you had to tighten bolts. And if you wanted to change it, you had to, that was just too slow. I didn't get that. And there was another thing called Bako. There was a, it was Bakelite sort of a plastic, but it was based on a board with holes in it that you stuck wires into the holes and then you slid down things on it. I think I still have it in the attic at home. It's probably worth millions. <laughs> don't know. But anyway, Baco, that was that. And we had a wind-up record player, uh, one of those ones with the lid that you put, oh, wow. a, put a 78 on it. Okay. And oh yeah, before the horse turned up in the back, <laughs> that was my kind of playground and there was an empty space down there. So all the kids over here, we called it the playhouse. Do you want to come over to the playhouse? There was nothing in there, only broken bits of furniture, but this record player was in there. And we had a song called, uh, I think it was something Hill. Um, Fats Domino, something, Blueberry Hill. Oh, wow. Played it endlessly. That was the only, I think, and then we broke it. Those old records were, I don't know what they were made out of, but there was a crack. So it was a play so far and then jump back, anyway. <laughs> well, my early my early memories of music would be what my brothers and sisters were listening to, which would have been the the Sean Dunphy's and the Dickie Rock stuff and all the Irish stuff, because there wasn't anything else. But my own would have been a bit more um, foreign, I suppose. Uh, it would have been the English things like like uh, the Faces and you know Itchy Coop Park, all those that ones. Would you know. be Radio Luxembourg or what? Yeah, it was. I had a tiny, tiny little radio one time, the size of a matchbox with a little earpiece, and it was on medium wave and it would disappear into nothing and it'd come back again in the early hours of the morning when I was supposed to be asleep. And uh, it, was, it really was, there was a dial on it and it was silver and black and uh, it was under the pillow. And uh, it was Radio Luxembourg and there was Radio Caroline. And there were, I had this pic, because I knew that Caroline was on a ship somewhere up in the North Sea, and I always had this picture, and there was one particular song with the Doors, um, Riders on the Storm, which is a very sort of soft kind of wispy thing, and it was perfect on medium wave, because it had disappeared and nothing, and it would come back again, and it sounded like it was meant to be. <laughs> Riders on the Storm, yeah. That still gets played. Yeah. And what about, do you remember going into Theatre Royal or... Yeah, Tops of the Town was the big thing, or, or what do they call the White Horse Inn, and there was other ones. I can't remember them, but I got brought to those, yeah. They were all very, I don't want to say Victorian or something, how would you describe them? Very, very theatrical. But the Tops of the Town was fun, I suppose, and the Glass Factory always won everything. Okay. <laughs> do you remember being brought to that? I do, yeah. And I remember the seats, they were red velvet and they were heavy iron seats and they made an awful noise so if you wanted to go to a toilet or something you had to leave it up <laughs> or else people would look you say, what are you doing? Um, I, I was fascinated with the idea of dimming lights because nobody had dimmer switches in those days and I was into this. And so I used to love it. The, the big event was me watching the lights dim because that was really different. You know? <laughs> okay. And there was the fire curtain or something, there was a big panel with adverts for everything from snow cream to coal or jewellery or whatever. This thing that would come down in front of the stage in case there was a fire. And there was a tiny hole in it because the, the actors couldn't see how many people. And if you knew where the hole was, you'd keep staring to see if you could see an eye, you know. That was a big trick. Do you remember things like uh, circus concerts? Yeah, there, there used to be a circus every so often. I think it was Polbury down there. Yeah, I can remember the kind of feel of it as opposed to the what was going on. It was the usual clowns and elephants and things, but that was a rarity. Uh, do you remember any of those special, there used to be some special things that used to come up with Ty Brickens and like uh, high wear accidents, not terrible? No, okay. no I don't. Bally Brickens was too Mind far trip. away altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond stage. That would have been a day trip. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been a special occasion. Um, but the other trips were out to Woodstown. We spent a lot of time in Woodstown. Um, myself, I remember mentioned Donald, who was in the Eatler. We used to do this rotation thing. I'd either go with them or they'd go with us. And we, uh, 
uh, out to Woodstown. It was a nice soft sand. You could dig a great big hole out there without too much trouble. And did you have a car? We had a car. You see, when I was growing up, I, it turned out that my brothers and sisters kind of got cars each. But in the early days, there was a car, okay? I think it was a Morris Minor because it had one of those little yellow indicator things between the passenger door and the, and the driver's door. There was a thing that flipped out and flashed yellow. And when it was finished flap, uh, flashing, it would go back in again. That was the biggest memory of that car. But there was some sort of a white finish to the steering wheel. Yeah, and kind of red leather, red stripey seats in the back. Uh, well, yeah, the big thing was going to Woodstown. You'd spend the whole thing looking at the back window. See what was coming and wave, you know, that kind of carry on. But Woodstown, so I don't know why, maybe it's, maybe it's just selective memory, but times were much sunnier. There was no such thing as rain. Maybe because you only remember the fun bits. If it was raining, you didn't remember it. <laughs> And, and what, what about, do you remember anything about, I mean, I'm sorry, you, you mentioned about the, the Quaker graveyard. Yeah. Do you remember that when you were a child, the Quaker graveyard? Well, it's, it's down in that corner, there's, there's the remains of the old church there. But that was a kind of a no-go no, no go area, but we, we used to look over the wall, but we'd never go in there because there was something about it being haunted or graves and things, you know, because um, that was kind of taboo. If anything went in there, it just stayed there. We didn't go in there. But there was... Um, that, um, it's, I think it's an ESB thing there. We used to get up on the roof of that. That was great fun. You know. <laughs> Look into the graveyard, but that was as far as we'd go. Uh, and what, else, what other things were, were in around this area that you remember about? Um, well, there was the chip shops. Okay. There was Delicatus chip shop, and there was the French Friar, F-R-Y-E-R, -E yes. which had the, the monks. There was all these little statues of monks up on the high shelf, and the whole thing was, 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 I wouldn't say it was religious themed, but it was the play on Friar, Friar thing, you know. And Anna, Anna, she had a cake shop as well. There was a cake shop at the end of um, John's Avenue. I think of the surname. But Anna had this going, so she had the, 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 the sweet cakes at one corner and she had the chips at the other corner. And I remember she had the, the, the thing I didn't like about that was that the counter was so high. And it was, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Chips. You couldn't be seen. You couldn't be seen, no. And, and then there was Delicatus down here, which was there long before that. But that was too tricky because you had to go across the junction to get to it. But they, were, they, they had six mini chips, so that was okay. You could get the chips. Instead of going for a trip to Mars, <laughs> you could have for chips and bring them up here. Uh, so there was the chippers. What else was going on around here? And you said it was the Fifi King there? Or? Well, well, that kind of was later. The early, it, there was always something in that corner. I think it was a pub first. And then it turned into a chip shop. Um, the character that served in there, what was his name? Eddie something. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Eddie, yeah. Um, yeah. He died. He did. He did. He was, an, he was a, a larger than life kind of character. DJ. I mean, he, he was. was like wine and stuff. Eddie. That's right. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. 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 So um, that was that. What else was going on? Then there was Winston's. There used to be a pub on the corner called Dower's Pub. Uh, it turned into Winston's, Bes Winston's and Besco's, I think it was. Turned into that great big, it's still more or less there, but it was a big yellow and white tiled front. Very trendy in the late 60s, I suppose early 70s. And I used to watch that. Our side window of our kitchen overlooked it, and I was fascinated with the building of this, because this was like New York sort of skyscraper stuff for me, and it was out the window. I spent a lot of time watching what they were doing. But I remember my dad used to go to... Um, hours in the afternoon for a pint before he came home and I have a very early memory of that as being another very dark pub you know and um, I was talking to somebody recently and he had a lot of information about it about what was at the back where there used to be horses and carts and things it was a real little uh, little well, place to hang out he was in the milk business okay. delivery actually just to deliver the milk okay. if you didn't come to the shop if you didn't come to the shop to uh, to buy it there was a little van with two drawers in the back, and there was milk in that, and we used to go out the out Tennessee's Road direction, or that, and deliver it to the door, you know, with the little silver bo actual bottles with silver tops. You know. That used to, I suppose health and safety wasn't really there because we used to hang out in the back of this van, literally hanging on the doors. You know. What we passed through. Later it was. I'm not sure. The earlier stuff used to come in in churns, so it couldn't have been. Yeah, couldn't have been. Yeah, and then it was snow cream took over the whole thing, and then it was in plastic crates, and um, do you want to stop my phone? Did that? Whose phone? That's my phone. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I, I think we're nearly finished. Well, the only other thing was these things here that we used to slide down the, the, the... That concrete wasn't there. It was a slippery kind of a slate top on it. And uh, I remember the heat of it in those days because I don't know whether the weather was better, but you know the way you get the heat off of stone? And it was actually hot. <laughs> and the one or two of them had, you had to know what you were doing because there was one or two of them where there was little edges sticking up. And if you went home with torn trousers, you were in trouble, you know. Were you sliding down that again? This kind of thing. Um, but I do remember over there, there was a park keeper and I never forgave him because uh, uh, he got on, we got on, I don't know, I think he might have died, but he promised me faithfully that he'd make me a kite. And it went on for ages, and I didn't want to say anything, but he never did it, you know? Don't mention his name. I don't know his name. I can see, <laughs> I can see his face. If there was a lineup in the cop shop now, I'd know that's him. <laughs> but I don't know what his name was. He had a, a, a blue, he was very official. I mean, this place is tiny, but we had a park keeper. There was nothing. <laughs> Wasn't the same parking no, big no. I remember him because he chased me out of it one day because I was collecting leaves for a biology class, and he thought I was vandalising the place. But I actually had them in a hanky on the back set, on the back of my bicycle, and he says, "You're sound." <laughs> so he backtracked a bit. You're all right, but ask me the next time. He came running. <laughs> yeah, leaves. I think he was famous. Sorry. Yeah. For chasing first. Was he? Yeah. He was. Yeah. Yeah. I remember his face too, but I don't know what his name was. Um, then there was the fountain in the park, which you remember the old one, which was very ornate. And uh, once in a blue moon, blue moon, they'd put water in the thing, and it'd be fantastic. But most of the time, it was just dry. You know, not sure sure why they never kept it going. It was a lovely thing. I think it's a copy of one that was. I saw one similar somewhere else. It's one in Dublin. It's in the same some hotel, yeah. It's in the grounds of some hotel and it's the exact same. Is it? Yeah. Is it still there? Let's rob it and put it back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? The one that's down there is the big ball, the glass ball, yeah. with the top that goes around like the cut of a tomato. I don't know why, I don't know why it does that. Like, all water features in water don't work. So yeah. Water, water. Yeah. I like it, that one that's down there, but. I think you have to put parazone or something in it to get the green off of the inside of that glass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Gavin, thanks very much for that. You're That's welcome. Great. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah.